Hi guys, today we're talking about this, the G63, which is a car that's intrigued me for a very long time. And to be honest, when you go to London, when you come down here in Monaco, you go to Cannes, you go to Paris, you actually see quite a lot of these and they're so expensive. With this kind of spec that this one's got, you're talking about 200,000 euros uh, here in France. So 160, 170,000 pounds. So massively expensive car. And once you've got it, I've always wondered like, what is it with G-Wagons? I've always thought they were, you know, good looking. I drove the last generation and to be honest, thought it was pretty crap to drive. I've heard this is a lot better and I've now been driving this around for three or four days and really kind of gotten to know about what it's like to live with one of these. What's the hype all about? Why do people love them so much? And why are so many people spending so much money to live with these as their daily drivers? Because it is a tank, it is a huge cube on wheels. Does it make any sense? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. First of all though, there's something rather snazzy coming up the hill. 720S. Oh no, it's a 7765. Is he coming back down? He's coming back down. This is an Instagram story. First things first, quick run through on this spec. Now I think this is the, honestly my favorite spec on a G-Wagon. Completely blacked out. Slovakian plates just to go with it. Um, yeah, everything in the front, like bumper um, protector things that you have there often, I don't, what they must have a precise name. Anyways, they're often silver, black down on this one. Obviously got the G63 wheels, red calipers. It's a bit dirty. Usually we clean the car for a video like this, but I thought this kind of went with the uh, G-Wagon character. Fully tinted windows. Yeah, and it's got a pretty snazzy interior. So look, if you hop in this side, I'll go around to the driver's side and uh, we can talk about this interior. It's very red, very red. And you know what, I, didn't, I wouldn't think I'd like it, but I really, really like it. And I was so confused by G-Wagons and so kind of not ready to like it, but I have fallen in love with this car and I'll explain why throughout the video. But first of all, the interior, because it is a huge, huge step up compared to the last generation which was looking really outdated. Now the most noticeable um, bits of kind of modern technology that they've put in are these two big screens here. So if I switch the car on, keyless go obviously, V8 comes into life. You can see the two screens. So this is kind of your dashboard, which is divided effectively in three segments. So you have your rev counter and your speed in the middle. And then through the buttons on the steering wheel, you can control information that come up on each side of your rev counter. So uh, yeah, that's a you know, pretty cool way of them having done it. The only thing with this, with the steering wheel is incredible. But uh, the one thing which having you know driven it basically daily over the last few days has actually happened more than you would expect is there is a limiter button here right so it's not for your cruise control it's just a speed limiter button and if you by accident as you're turning the steering wheel click that it will limit the speed at whatever speed you're doing when you clicked it and it's such a small little light that comes on to tell you that's happened i i did it twice and i didn't realize i just had to stop and switch the car off because i was blocked at like 20 miles an hour so yeah that's maybe just me being an idiot but i don't think the positioning of that button and how easy it is to press is particularly smart then we've got these little kind of um screens mini screens down here where you can personalize all the information you want currently you know there's always two buttons here currently you've got one for the traction settings and one to flick between manual and automatic for the gearbox and you've got this little wheel here which allows you to spin between all the different modes so you've got comfort mode which I've been driving in pretty much all the time. Sport, Sport Plus, uh, Individual, which is your own setup, or Slippery, which is obviously if you're going off-road, basically. Now, they've managed to give this interior such a modern touch whilst keeping kind of what the essence of what the G-Wagon is. I think they've done a brilliant job at that on the exterior as well. When it came out at first, I was like, oh, it just looks exactly like the old one. But little by little, your eye kind of gets used to the new lights, to the slightly new little bits of design here and there, which means that the old car now looks really old. I think you can really tell the difference between the two. And that just goes to show that, you know, uh, the biggest differences come through a lot of different details. Now, they've kept the essence of the G-Wagon by having this kind of perpendicular um, front windscreen right here, and also dashboard. 
Um, so the dash is just completely kind of perpendicular here, but it gives it this really particular character. You've got all sorts of different gadgets and buttons. Honestly, um, you're pr most of the people probably aren't going to use them too much. I mean, you can do your exhaust, you have your 360 um, cameras all around, the car's got cameras everywhere, uh, low range, and then you've got your traction, suspension, gearbox, and then driving settings here. Here you can select for your differentials, so you just put this, so trail mode, for example. So a lot of different settings if you're going off-road, but as we all know, 98% of these, especially in 63 AMG version, G-classes will not go off-road. So yeah, I don't know how much that's really gonna get used. What I'm more interested in is what a lot of people use these cars for, which is daily driving, having your family in, and for that, actually, we should explore the rear seats. Now this is a huge car and I am a small bloke. So obviously if you're sat behind me, you've got plenty of room. Now, not as much as you would necessarily expect from a car quite of this size, because it, it is massive. When you're driving around, you do feel that. It's got a huge boot round back as well. These seats can lie down. So yeah, you've got plenty of room. You've also got your own little settings for your climate control back here, which is quite nice. And on this one, we've actually got the option of having the screens. So if you've got your kids back here, you've got heated seats as well as an option. It's a really nice place to be. The headroom is unbelievable. Again, I am tiny. So yeah, overall, family car does work pretty well. You've got a little ski pass right here. You've got two little cup holders as well. But yeah, feels spacious, but they, they could have gotten a bit more space out of them. But that's what it's always been with G-Wagons. They've never been, you know, kind of there to replace the S-Classes and stuff. They have their own character. They're so particular. And for some reason, it just really works. Now, one of the best things about this interior as well is this Burmeister sound system. Um, so a fairly expensive option, but oh my God, this has got to be one of the best sound systems I've ever heard in a car. Now, really well soundproofed as well. You've got double glazing through the windows, currently on child lock back here. So very well soundproofed, great sound system. Let's go around front. And I'll just tell you one more little annoyance I've got with the interior. This is a small thing, right? So you've got eight different massages you can use and so many different things you can do through this screen right here. You can change the colors of the ambient lighting. You can do so many things. But so many times I found myself trying to click on the screen um, just out of habit from other modern cars that have the touch screen. But for example, you know, you come here, you want to select your massage, your driving passenger seat massage. And for some, you just want to click and it's not a touch screen. So this, you get used to it but it's you know, fairly particular to navigate and not quite as kind of straightforward as if it was touch. Can you tell that I'm nitpicking here to find things? Overall, it is a fantastic interior. But where things really come into their own, surprisingly, because it was actually the downfall of the last generation, is when you drive this thing. So we are now in the G-Wagon with over 550 horsepower, over 600 newton meters of torque. Did you hear that lock sound, by the way? Just to give you another, I mean, that is, so cool. Now, obviously, these cars were used uh, in the army before, and uh, the you know the G wagon platform is an old, old concept. Now, this isn't going to be one of our traditional kind of driving hard on these mountain roads outside of Monaco. This is a cruise. This is a cruise to show what it's actually like to drive one of these. Now, stating the obvious, when you get into this car, it feels massive. You feel like you're sat on top of two other cars and the windscreen is kind of stuck to the front of your nose and so upright. So it's very particular. There's nothing quite like, I mean, maybe a Jeep or something, but I haven't had much experience with those. So it's a very, very particular kind of driving environment. And then once you get going, you realize just how quiet it is inside. And then little by little, it's when this car starts kind of taking over and making you love it because it has such a character. And I came in here being like, oh, I don't see the point of G-Wagons. I wouldn't say I was a G-Wagon hater, but I definitely wasn't one of the massive G-Wagon fans. And I have been completely converted. For some reason, for a car of this size, once you've driven it for 10, 15 minutes, it suddenly starts completely disguising its size. Now, how it does that exactly, I'd love to tell you. I'm not entirely sure. It's a combination of the lack of body roll, the lightness of the steering, the decent visibility you have around you, all the gadgets that help you navigate the car. 
um, the good steering ratio for a car of this size, all those things come together to make the car feel a lot smaller than it really should and than it is. So you actually can get away with driving it around town without feeling, I mean obviously it's not like driving a smart car, but without feeling too, too over the top. It's got great braking as well for a car of this size. That's often something which is lacking and decent feel through the brake pedal as well. And because it's got over 600 Newton meters of torque, you can whack it into manual, whack it into sport mode, and it's got a decent amount of go. I mean, it, a car of this size should not be able to do this. And it's so funny, as soon as you accelerate, you get that kind of spitfire, angry lion noise coming from those side exhausts. And ah, oh, it's just got such a brutal kind of, it's the way it is, it's not trying to be any other car. It is a G-Wagon, it fully accepts the fact that it's a G-Wagon. And you either love it or hate it, but it's not gonna make any excuses for itself. And I love that with this thing. I just think it's, like, when I started driving it at first, you know, I was, I was getting in, I was like, oh my God, why is, why is the front windscreen right here? Why is the car so big? It's so excessive. The fuel consumption is gonna be ridiculous. Yes, the fuel consumption is not great, granted. That's probably not, I mean, realistically, people who are spending nearly over 150,000 pounds on this car probably aren't that worried about that. Nonetheless, that is a negative point for this car. But it feels like if an S-Class went to Glastonbury and it was like on day four of Glastonbury, that's what this feels like. Does that make sense? It's an S-Class after having visited a music festival. Just couldn't care less about anything and is just doing its own thing and isn't going to apologize to anyone about it. It's so nice. Now, the lack of body roll, when you accelerate, the whole car does you know, point towards the sky a little bit. But it gives, again, it adds that that character, I'm gonna keep coming back on this. I'm just impressed by the step up compared to the last generation. So it does point towards the sky when you accelerate, but when you go around a corner, it actually stays decently flat for this size of car. Um, it doesn't feel as heavy as it should. It definitely still feels like a big, heavy car, but it's done a pretty good job at masking out. Not quite as good as something like an Urus or something. But then an Urus doesn't have that feel that this has you know when i'm driving all i can see are those huge indicator lights on the front hood that massive front hood in front of you if i look behind me i can barely see anything behind me because i've just got the spare wheel blocking the view but i don't care it's so it just brings that child out of you it also there is something about this driving position being up kind of above uh, all the other cars on the road I've never been a huge fan of it. It's not necessarily my favorite thing with this car, but I know a lot of people like it. And it's a lot, you know, one of the main reasons that people buy these cars a lot. Now, all of the driver aids make it quite a bit easier to live with this car because, you know, parking it, I've actually found is not too difficult because you've got the 360 parking cameras and the steering ratio is so good. It's actually fairly easy to, uh, to park. And because it is a cube, it's quite, easy despite it being big to predict the size of the car so for example an urus which is you know similar price range similar kind of car is a lot harder to predict because it's very slanted so you can't quite see where the car is so you're really relying on the gadgets whereas with this it's pretty obvious where the end of the car is going to be because the cars are square i get it i now get it the whole g-wagon um thing is completely pointless there is no need for this car unless you are doing some serious off-roading or driving very quickly down the Autobahn so you need over 500 horsepower. There's no need for it, that's for sure. But you still kind of love it, you know? It's like there's, there's no need for eating a crazy amount of chocolate at Easter, but you still really enjoy doing it. It's one of those things like, you almost feel guilty admitting that you like this car, but everyone that's been in it and everyone that, so I, you know, people that have driven it that I've spoken to go, yeah, you know, like once you've driven it, you kind of understand. It's addictive. You know, I'm getting a massage right now and I know I will never be able to get a similar experience apart from if I'm in a G-Wagon again. And that's where they really nailed it with this car. It's its own thing. And you can live with it. Look, look, look at this. Should we do some off-roading? <laughs> How cool is that? I'm driving a 600 horsepower twin turbo V8 around 
but then we can just go whack it and park it however we like like this. And inside we're in an S-Class. It's so many things in one. Ah, I really like it. One thing that said a lot for me was, you know, we're lucky enough to be able to drive a few different cars and have been in a few different cars. And often when I'll get lent cars, um, I'll drive it for the video, drive it around to really decide, you know, what I'm going to say in the video, etc. But with this, it was the first time that I just got up yesterday evening and I was like, I just want to go drive it. I want to drive around in it with the music on and just cruise, just have a good time. And I loved it. And I haven't had that in a car in a really, really long time. And as it was, as I was driving, I was like, what is it about this car, which is making it stand out so much to me, even compare, compared to other cars that are more expensive, more sporty, the kind of car I usually enjoy more. It's very hard to put your finger on what makes this car so special. But the best way I can think about it is like I said earlier, it's a G-Wagon and it's not trying to be anything else. And that's what I love. I hope that all made a bit of sense for you. I've really enjoyed driving around in this car and I've really enjoyed experiencing it. And honestly, if you ever get the chance to experience one of these things, maybe you'll just get a snippet of what I'm talking about. And let me know if you agree, if you've ever been in one. You know, I know it's a car that doesn't make any sense. I know it's a car which is, is not environmentally friendly in any way. Um, you know, they're making their efforts and it's something that no one really needs. And I agree and I don't see the purpose in it. But for some reason, as I said, it's kind of one of those guilty pleasure things. And um, they've nailed it. They've really nailed it with this platform. We're going to end the video here, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment down below what you think of this car, what you think of the spec. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Hope you've enjoyed. Bye-bye.